everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. Are you guys ready for another epic testing video? Well, I sure am because I have been working on this video for like two or three months now. Um, this video is on mineral sunscreens and I have been on, as usual, one of my epic searches for a great all mineral sunscreen that could be worn on a daily basis. So it has to look good on its own, it has to look good under powder makeup, and it has to look good under liquid makeup. And let me tell you, that is a tall order, especially for mineral sunscreen. Wearing sunscreen on a daily basis is very, very important. The sun's rays, especially those longer UVA rays, cause most of the photo aging and photo damage that's done to our skin. So in order to avoid or prevent a lot of the wrinkles and aging, uh, and skin cancers that you can get when you're older. My advice to everyone, no matter who you are, no matter what kind of skin you have, is to wear a full broad spectrum sunscreen every single day. Now there are two different kinds of sunscreens that you can get. Uh, if you just go to the store and pick up a sunscreen, most likely you're going to end up with a chemical based sunscreen. And while there's nothing wrong with those, this video is on all mineral sunscreens. The reason it's on all mineral sunscreens is that I used to use chemical sunscreens and be very happy with them. They actually make some really elegant formulations that are so easy to spread. They look good under makeup. They look good on their own. The problem is that they have to be absorbed into your skin in order for them to work. Since my skin has become more sensitive through the use of my anti-aging actives, what I found was that chemical sunscreens were really irritating my skin and I was ending up with a lot of redness every day. So then I started using mineral sunscreens and those are great, especially for people with rosacea, acne, uh, sensitive skin, super dry skin. Mineral sunscreens are the way to go. The mineral based sunscreens don't absorb into your skin. They set up a protective barrier on top of your skin that reflect the sun's rays away. But the problem with them is that because they're a mineral that reflects light away, they don't tend to look good. So you remember those old um, pictures of the lifeguard with the white on his nose to protect? That is zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. It is a white mineral by nature. But fortunately, science, love science, has brought those uh, ingredients a long way so that now they're much more wearable. They're not quite 100% there yet, which is why I had to test so many to find a couple of good ones, but they're on their way. And probably within a couple of years, we're gonna have awesome mineral-based sunscreens that you can just put on that look good under any makeup, that look good on their own. But for now, it is a tall order. So I tested 12 all mineral-based sunscreens. So for each of these sunscreens, I tried to level the playing field as much as I possibly can doing this as an at-home experiment. So what I did is I put each one on in the morning over my usual repertoire of lotions and serums. And I tested it underneath a powder foundation to see how it worked with a powder. Then I took each one and tested it on another day to test it with a liquid foundation. So I shot a ton of footage and I record everything. I'm not gonna show you all of it because this video would go on for about three and a half hours if I did. <laughs> this is gonna be a long one. I probably should cut it up into a couple videos, but what the heck, I don't feel like it. I'm doing it all here. So <laughs> you can bounce around, feel free to look around or just skip right to the end if you wanna see uh, the, the good stuff, okay? All right, the first product and therefore the worst product that I'm going to talk about today is MD Solar Sciences Mineral Tinted Cream. This comes in an SPF of 30. It retails for $32 for 1.7 ounces. The sunscreens this one uses are 2% titanium dioxide and 17% zinc oxide. It contains green tea extract, cranberry fruit extract, pomegranate extract, and vitamin C, so all really good antioxidants. This one contains no parabens, sulfates, or phthalates. It is not tested on animals, and it's water resistant to 80 minutes. This one has a tinted gel cream hybrid with lots of silicone. It's a very slippery, silky feel. It feels like a lightweight oil going on. It slips on invisibly. It takes no effort to spread and blend. It was still slightly whitish though, so, and it has a nice low luster semi-matte finish. 
All right, so now let me bring in the powder foundation video so you can see how it did with that. This one, it caused a lot of balling and pilling on application with the powder. Once you get it on there, it looks okay, but throughout the day, it migrates around and it's visibly pooled all over your face by the end of the day. So this one was pretty much unwearable with powder. And with liquid foundation, let me bring in the liquid video, the sunscreen feels wet and makes the foundation just smear over the top of it with lots of globs and streaks everywhere. It looks awful. It made the liquid wear off really quickly and settle into lines and wrinkles. It made skin, my skin dry and flaky by midday and the shine could still be seen through the makeup. So this one was an epic fail on all fronts. All right, the second to the worst in the SPF 30 group was such a shocker to me. This was the Paula's Choice Hydrolite Shine Free Daily Mineral Complex. This is an SPF 30. It retails for $26 for two ounces. This contains 2.23% titanium dioxide and 6% zinc oxide. It contains green tea, licorice root ex extract, chamomile, aloe, and algae. This one was not water resistant, so not great for wearing to the beach or if you're gonna be sweating. This one feels like a lightweight lotion. Doesn't have a silky dimethicone feel, but it does have a few silicones and dimethicones in it. It's not sticky or overly thick, and it is unscented. It glides on the skin really smoothly and a little goes a long way. It does disappear right into the skin with no clumping at the edges and no white cast. And it made my skin a little red and irritated, and I was so surprised because I thought this was going to be, you know, super soothing. The other thing is that it's shiny. And when you're going to say right in the name of the product, shine free, then I want it to be shine free. But it does feel set and it is transparent. With the powder foundation, it had some minor micro pilling is what I'm going to call it of the powder foundation. Um, otherwise, it applied really nicely and I felt like my skin looked slightly smoother with this with the powder on it than it normally does. So under the liquid foundation, it was really, really bad under the liquid foundation. So disappointing. It was streaky. It was clumpy. It made my foundation settle into my lines and wrinkles. It also seemed to make the foundation go on much more sheer than normal. Just not good. And it took uh, twice as much foundation to get the normal amount of coverage because it was so sheer and weird. Final takeaway on the Paula's Choice is that it's not shine free, so it can't be worn alone. The powder looked good, but the liquid was awful. All right, we're getting into the better ones in the SPF 30. This one is the Kula Face Mineral Sunscreen Cucumber Matte Finish. It's an SPF of 30. It retails for $36 for 1.7 ounces. Now, these are all fairly expensive, I gotta say. I did find some from the drugstore, don't worry. It is 3.2% titanium dioxide and 1.8% zinc oxide. It's a little light on the zinc. It contains rosehip oil, evening primrose, flaxseed oil, vitamin C, and shea butter. It's cruelty-free and preservative-free. It has a light cucumber scent, which is nice. It's greasy feeling. It's not silky or dry like a dimethicone feel. The oily, slippery feel makes it really easy to spread over the face. So it really goes on easily and spreads around really quickly, but it does leave a white cast behind. I was hoping that it would go away when it's set up. It has a matte finish, so it's not shiny at all. So this one where it has matte in the title actually was matte and I like that. Um, it was still slightly whitish though, so it seems like it's a trade-off. You can't get both, you're either white or you're shiny. Once set, the greasy feel is gone and it feels like skin, so that was awesome. The matte finish creates a soft focused look that diminishes wrinkles, but it also fills in the pores with white polka dots. Oh my God, can we not get one that, you know, argh, so frustrating. All right, so onto the powder foundation. Uh, the application, caused a few little flakes, but no major sloughing. Makeup seemed to go on really sheer, and it took a lot of it to get any coverage. And I feel like I used twice as much. And let's move on to the liquid. With the liquid foundation, it doesn't completely cover the white cast. So the liquid foundation goes on a little sheerer than it normally would. It played nicely with the liquid though. There was no balling or pilling or sloughing or streaking or caking. So I wrote very good with the liquid, even though it took a little more to cover, it was fine because it did eventually cover. And the takeaway on this one is that, oh, so close, yet so frustrating, holy cow. 
It could be worn alone if it weren't for the white cast. It's not good with powder and it was very good with the liquid. All right, so let's move on. The fourth and therefore the best of the SPF 30s is Hydropeptide Solar Defense. It's an SPF 30, it retails for $44 and it is comes in 1.7 ounces. It contains 2.5% titanium dioxide and 6% zinc oxides. The notable ingredients in this one are green tea, acai, aloe, hyaluronic acid, and galanga. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's gluten, paraben, and phthalate free and not tested on animals. But this one is not water resistant. This one is really interesting. It has a bluish purplish tint. It also had a fruity and flowery scent. It had a thick lotion texture and it comes in a nice pump too, but it's not as thick as a cream and it's not silicone-y feeling. It disappears into the skin. Uh, there were no problems rubbing it in with streaking or gathering at the hairline. It blends beautifully. You could apply it on the go without a mirror and not have to worry about it, what it looks like. It didn't leave any kind of a white mask. It was slightly shinier than I like, but within the realm of acceptability. But it's a soft shine, not a hard shine. And so it gives a, like, a little bit of a soft focus look. It was quite wearable on its own. All right, so let me bring in the powder foundation video. This one had no pilling and no sloughing with the powder foundation. The powder applied very much as it normally does with normal opacity and using a normal amount. So the sunscreen finish or shine doesn't show through the powder, so powder makeup applies true, which is great. So really good on the powder. The liquid foundation, there was no pilling and no sloughing with this either. It worked really well with the liquid foundation and um, there was no smearing. It didn't settle into pores or wrinkles. Uh, the coverage and finish was normal for the foundation. Yay. So this one was great because it really set up and so it didn't affect what you put on over the top of it. Yay, yes, finally, one that's good in all three areas. So that's why Hydropeptide Solar Defense SPF 30 is the winner of the SPF 30s. Now let's move on to the SPF 50s. Starting from the worst again, the worst of the SPF 50s. This is the La Roche-Posay Anthelios 50 Mineral Tinted Sunscreen SPF 50. It's $33.50 for 1.7 ounces. This contains 11% titanium dioxide and no zinc oxide. So it's not giving any protection against the UVA longer rays. I'm including it, but only to tell you not to use it. Let's move on from that one. All right, so the second to worst one that I will actually give the full treatment to is the Coats Flawless Complexion Soothing Mineral Complex. This is an SPF 50, it retails for $19.99 for 2.5 ounces. This one doesn't contain any titanium dioxide, but it does contain 20% zinc oxide. It's 100% free of preservatives and oils, it's non-comedogenic, it's not tested on animals, and it contains vitamin C and E. This one feels like a whipped up gel, but it's a little stiffer and thicker in texture. It contains a lot of silicones and it doesn't have a scent. It glides on really nicely thanks to all those silicones. It goes on transparent but shiny. The tint disappears completely. There's no blending problems around the hairline. It feels heavy and greasy on my skin. It accentuates every pore and wrinkle and it doesn't feel dry even after 40 minutes. The powder went on okay. It had no balling or pilling. It tones down the shine a little bit, but it was still shining through. Pores and wrinkles were still very visible because of the hardness of the shine, layering off of every imperfection in the skin. All right, so let me bring in the liquid foundation portion. Um, a healthy layer of matte foundation can't keep the shine down on this one. That shine just needs to shine through everything. The makeup applied nicely over the sunscreen. There was no smearing or rolling, no clumping. So there were no spotted pores. It looked smooth on the surface. It still didn't feel set though. So it always makes me nervous that if it's gonna be like sliding around all day. So, and it's no good on its own and no good with powder makeup. This next product is from one of my favorite skincare brands and that is CeraVe. So this is the CeraVe Face Lotion Invisible Zinc. It comes in an SPF 50, retails for $11.99 for two ounces and it's available at the drugstore. The sunscreen this one contains is 4.9% titanium dioxide and 4.7% 
90% zinc oxide. The notable ingredients in this one are the same as in their uh, moisturizers and other products, which are ceramides and niacinamide. It was quite a bit thicker than the others. It's not full of silicones at all, so it's not as easy to spread on the skin. It's like a stiff kind of um, texture to it. It feels like a heavy lotion. It makes me feel better protected though because I can see where I'm putting it because it does have a bit of a white cast and um, once it's set I know that it's not sliding around so I felt really well protected in this one. Unfortunately it does leave that white cast behind which is a disappointment considering that it says it's invisible zinc and I can see it. So 20 minutes later it wasn't too shiny and not overly white but unfortunately cannot be worn on its own. With the powder foundation, it takes more powder to cover the white cast of the sunscreen. So you have to put on more, which can result in a little bit of a cakey result with the powder. It doesn't act like a primer, so it doesn't have any kind of a smoothing effect like some of the ones with a lot of silicones and dimethicones do. And it needed extra buffing around the edges to cover up those white edges. Now with the liquid foundation, there was no balling or pilling or sloughing, but it made the makeup go on smeary and made the makeup settle into my lines and wrinkles. Hmm, such a bummer. So the takeaway on this one is that it could almost be worn alone if you are on the pale side and the white cast isn't going to show up, but it does have a not shiny finish. The powder was okay, the liquid was no good. All right, we're getting up there. We're into the top three of the SPF 50s. So this is the SkinCeuticals Physical Fusion UV Defense SPF 50. It's $30 for 1.7 ounces. The sunscreens that this one contains are 6% titanium dioxide and 4.9% zinc oxide. It contains vitamin E and some kind of a plankton. I'm not sure what that's for. It's paraben free and it is sweat and water resistant. This is a runny tinted liquid with a strong titanium dioxide scent and it feels like a serum. It is fairly easy to apply but the tint can streak and clump or stick to dry skin flakes. You need to check it in a magnifying mirror definitely and press it to make sure that everything is nice and smooth and even. It doesn't spread very far so it takes a little bit more to get your face covered and it leaves no white cast which is great and it has a nice low luster semi matte finish. It is wearable on its own, finally one that's wearable on its own. It has perfect skin like feel that I really really liked. Alright, let me bring in the powder foundation video. It looks fine from a distance but up close the powder stays on the surface and looks a little cakey. It caused the powder to cling to the fine hairs on my face and look like it's floating above the surface instead of bonded with my skin. So again, it was another one of those weird surface things that happened with these. It needs much more care when applying. On the liquid foundation, it was just awful. Oh, so sad. The makeup goes on smeary in all the same places that the sunscreen went on smeary. So if you looked at it in your 15X mirror and you had a smear on your chin, when you put the makeup on over it, there's going to be a smear there to go with it. It bunched up in some places, so I had like glob over here and a glob over here. It caused the foundation to immediately settle into my lines and wrinkles. So with liquid foundation, it was unwearable because it made me look older and worse and smeary and settled into the wrinkles. So that stunk. So this one is very wearable on its own, possibly the most wearable on its own. Just okay with powder and really bad with liquid makeup. Alrighty, here we go. Second to the best, Neutrogena Healthy Defense Daily Moisturizer with Sunscreen. This is the one that says Pure Screen. It's an SPF 50. It's $13.99 for a 1.7 ounce uh, tube. Uh, this contains 5% titanium dioxide and 3% zinc oxide. This Neutrogena is very basic. The ingredient list is very small. It has a moisturizer lotion feel. It's not overly creamy or thick or silicone-y, so that's nice. It just felt normal, like a normal lotion. It has a strong scent of titanium dioxide, but that dissipates 
fairly quickly. There was no problem rubbing it in. It had no white globs. It disappeared into the skin, except maybe a tiny little smear of whiteness around the hairline. It was still slightly whitish though. It was not completely matte, but was quite wearable on its own. It feels set and it was not moving around. And so now let's try it with the powder. So with the powder foundation, there was no sloughing or pilling caused by the brush application. The powder makeup tones down the slight shine and looks good. Makeup applied as normal and pores and wrinkles look good. So that was great. Now with the liquid foundation, the sunscreen creates a slick surface that the foundation goes on very smeary and streaky over. Oh no, another one that I can't get all three. It did not look good up close. I had to check very carefully and re-blend the foundation by pressing it with my fingers. Even so, I ended up with polka dots pores and um, the foundation went on very sheer and needed a lot of concealer. So the takeaway, love the finish and ease of application and it was quite wearable on its own. The powder was good, but the liquid was bad. Okay, here we go, the last one, and therefore the best of these sunscreens in my humble opinion. This is the Exuviance Sheer Daily Protector in SPF 50 PA++++. This is $42 for 1.7 ounces. This contains 7% titanium dioxide and 6% zinc oxide. It contains vitamin E, lactobionic acid, and green tea antioxidants. It's fragrance-free, paraben and oil free. It's non-comedogenic, but it is not water or sweat resistant. It is a tinted, runny, liquidy formula. It does have a titanium dioxide smell. It is thicker than it looks, so it doesn't spread super easily, but it's not full of silicones, which I don't really like, so I really like the feel of this. It dries down to a skin-like finish. With a skin-like amount of soft gloss, it's slightly shinier than I would like, but it's not bad. It could easily be worn on its own, but it's better with just a little dusting of setting powder. It feels like I have on a moisturizer, not a sunscreen. Let's bring in the powder foundation video. It goes on over the sunscreen very nicely with very little pilling, but there were two tiny pills, one on my cheek and one on my chin. The powder acted normal like it does on naked skin. The foundation gave its normal amount of coverage and smoothing. All right, now let's bring in the liquid foundation video. Uh, there was no reacting with the liquid foundation and the sunscreen. It went on very much like normal, but was slightly smeary in two small places, chin and forehead, but not anything that anyone could actually see. It did make the pores on my cheeks a little bit white and spotty and can still see the slight shine through the foundation. A little setting powder would make this work really well. So, while not perfect, sadly, it was the best of the SPF 50s on its own. It was the best of the F SPF 50s under the powder, and it wasn't 100% under the liquid, but it wasn't awful either. Really, this is just more a testament to how difficult it is to make an all-mineral sunscreen that works really well in all three different ways. All right, let's go to the awards portion of the video where I break it down for you, uh, which was the best in each of the following categories. Best and most wearable on its own goes to Skin SkinCeuticals Physical Fusion UV Defense, Best Under Powder Foundation, Neutrogena Healthy Defense Daily Moisturizer with Pure Screen. All right, the Best Under Liquid Foundation, that award goes to Hydropeptide Solar Defense SPF 30. And Best Drugstore Foundation overall, with a price point of $13.99 for 1.7 ounces is Neutrogena Healthy Defense Daily Moisturizer with Pure Screen. The best overall performer in the SPF 30s was Hydropeptide Solar Defense. And the best of the SPF 50s overall was Exuviance Sheer Daily Protector. And last, but by no means least, the overall winner and the best out of all 12 that I tried for me was the Exuviance Sheer Daily Protector SPF 50 PA++++. For me, this one had the best, most full spectrum coverage to keep those aging and cancer-causing rays off my skin. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that is really the net net of what I'm looking for in a sunscreen. So thanks for your time today. I know this was probably a long one with all the video footage cutting in, but I think it's important to show how it looks so that you guys can decide what you want because you know, not everybody's skin is the same. You might want different things from me. So I like to show everything and that way you can pick one too. All right, so that's it for today, everybody. I hope you have a great day and thanks for watching. Take care and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.